Hello and welcome. This is Fantasy Grounds Academy with Founder Layround. Today we're going to discuss the Map Tools art subscription and we'll look at some of the assets that you might get from subscribing. So the first things first, I want to cover the actual subscription. So if you go to the fantasygrounds.com website and you pull down the store and you click on art subscription, this is where the art subscription information is. Some of the most important and most commonly asked questions are answered right in the front page, such as what is the benefit of subscribing versus buying the products outright? Well, supposedly the sub will eventually provide more content overall at a cheaper price. Um, assets are continually added to the subscription. So when you once you subscribe, if they add something, it doesn't change your cost. Um, if you cancel your subscription, you will not be able to access your assets. So in other words, if you subscribe and you decide a week later you don't like it, if you cancel, it will take away your ability to use the assets that you have subscribed to. It even says it if you're using PayPal right on the top corner. It says warning, you will not have an active subscription if you cancel. So remember that a lot of people complain or they say they didn't know better. Well, it tells you right here. And when you're in PayPal, it actually says, you know, on the top right, there's a little graphic that says, you know, watch out if you do this, that you'll lose access. However, you can always uh, resubscribe at another time, pick up where you left off. You won't lose anything but the access. Uh, what happens to the images? So Fantasy Grounds will remember the assets that you try to use, but they won't display. So they'll have a red question mark or some kind of X that will basically say that the art itself isn't actually displayed or, or available. And that also happens if you bring in your own content and you move it from the directory you're normally in. So be careful of that. Um, how frequently do we add art? So the Fantasy Grounds uh, Smiteworks, they add art at least every month. I've seen two or three art packs at a time uh, previously. Um, to install the art packs, once you have a license and you have the subscription, all you have to do is update your Fantasy Grounds and those assets will be under the assets image folders within the uh, Fantasy Grounds Unity, and then you search for FG as your prefix. I will show you another way to, to increase that uh, efficiency. So you have to have an access of, of subscription to the license for the platform, and you also have to, or you can have the ultimate license, whatever. You just can't have the demo count. That's what they're saying. Um, for the cost, you can subscribe for $5 a month, which is basically less than the cost of a iced coffee. So if you can give up one of those per month, there, there you go. Um, as far as the overall outright one is $50 a year, you save a little bit of money, but like they said, overall in time, the $5 will, will become more valuable uh, because of the amount of content that will be available. And as you can see, there's tons of content here. One of the things that I'm working on in the background for myself is to have direct connection or a direct um, idea of what each art pack has inside. So I'm going to flip over to Fantasy Grounds and I will show you what that looks like um, in what we would pretty much call as a, uh, you know, like a preview. So I will go to the website for a moment and show you what that looks like just in case you want to see what exactly I was just talking about. Uh, but in the meantime, um, just remember, just go to Fantasy Grounds uh, to their um, actual website, and then you will actually go to the store, drop down, and then you will find the link to the subscription. So that is in the details of this video. At the end of the video, I will show you um, what that looks like. Um, and then, well, I will basically link it for you. So just remember the, you know, you, you're going to order the the access to it. You'll have it as long as you have your subscription. If you cancel, then you cancel. I mean, that's, 
you won't have a subscription access after that. So the next thing is we're going to take a look at some of the assets. One of the things that I'm working on in Unity is the ability for myself to be able to navigate to what I have. So the, what the, the ask is is that you go to your assets folder, which is on the bottom right corner of the interface. And once the assets comes up, you have all this stuff. And if you have a lot of content like me, there's a ton of bags here. I mean, there's hundreds of them in here. Now this probably won't be your problem initially, but you will run into that if you start getting a lot of content. And you gotta remember, I've been collecting for a few years, so that's why I have so much stuff. But if you page through these, you're gonna get to eventually the FG because they're in alphabetical order. So if you click on this next page, that's one way to navigate, especially if you don't have a lot of content. The other way is to actually search. So if you go to the top here where the little search icon is like a magnifying glass, you'll see there's these FG art pack, FG maps. Well, these are not all the same. They all have different content in them, but if you remember the FG part, um, that'll help narrow down your search. So I'm just going to type FG and hit enter. And what it should do technically is, is filter this out to where you have enough uh, information to search. But as you can see, it doesn't filter it out enough. It doesn't, it doesn't work. You have to have a third, uh, try a space and then use the same filter and hit enter. And that will give you what you're looking for. So FG so fantasy grounds space and there you go. So just remember to put the space afterwards because that's that's what triggers the search. If you do less than three characters, it's not going to give you that. So here's all the FG packs that you could potentially get if you subscribe. Now, if you are a new or free user, you won't have access to this. There might be a little bit of things that come with Fantasy Grounds, but they won't be as robust. You won't have quite as many art asset packs. There's some things that you need to remember about Fantasy Grounds is that the artwork that's included is internal and it is for Fantasy Grounds. So in other words, you cannot create a map and export it out of Fantasy Grounds. Uh, the other thing is if you bring in third-party content like your own tiles and such, that's totally fine. The only thing is when you're starting to build maps, those assets or those files are actually going to be pushed to your player. So when you share a map that you've created with non-Fantasy Grounds assets, you potentially will send over the files to your players temporarily while you're playing. And that creates more bandwidth issues, meaning you're using a lot of memory to push that map, especially if it's a big map. You want to try to avoid large maps. In Fantasy Grounds, though, if you use the built-in tile sets and the built-in assets, you will cut down that quite a bit. Um, so in other words, you're only sending the data which is the coordinates, the location, the asset type, instead of the actual file. So that way it will be less burden on your table. So it, it takes up a lot less memory by using the internal assets. Some people have asked if you can make collections. Currently, you cannot make a favorited asset collection, but what you can do is create some generic maps pull in the assets that you want for each map type. When you're done creating those generic maps, save it as a module and export it. And what will happen is when you're using it in your games, you can load that module and you'll already have the basic building blocks of what you need. That way you're not searching for the assets all over again. That is kind of a workaround or a tip that you can use to try to mitigate that. The other thing I've done here is when I've, Notice that when you buy a map pack or anything from Fantasy Grounds, you don't necessarily remember or know what's in each pack. So in other words, if you buy one pack, you're probably okay. You'll get intimately familiar with it. You'll realize what it has in there. But what I've done is take taken all of the, the packs that are current, and I've given it to genre, so I remember kind of what the general genre is for each pack, 
and if it has backgrounds or brushes or decorations. And as you can see, a lot of them are different. So some of them have brushes, some of them don't. Some of them have floors and walls and some of them don't or they're not labeled as such. So what I've done is made myself a little list here of what actually comes inside the pack as far as asset types. And then at the bottom, I have a direct link that goes right to the store, right to the object or right to the store item of the packs themselves if I have any further questions or if I even want to go out and look at some of these for, for extra stuff. So even if you don't own the content, it's nice to know what's available. It's in Fantasy Grounds. You don't have to leave it until you are ready to look and buy something. The other thing is I'm going to include some thumbnails in a reference manual for this module and even maybe even some reviews and maybe some snapshots of some things that I've created with it, those sort of things. So usually people want to look at the little furniture, torches, all those sorts of things like, like floors and walls and such. But there are brushes where you can paint your own backgrounds and walls. Um, as a matter of fact, that's the only thing I haven't really touched. Everything else I've messed with, I haven't really got into the brushes part. I, I'm not as artistic as some people. So the brushes I use sparingly, depending on what the situation is. But in general, I just use tiles and you know little furniture and those sort of things. And of course, I'll use the effects, line of sight and all that. But I'm just talking about the assets themselves. So what I've done is created a search title. So if I wanted to find Fantasy Ground Siege Pack, I'm just going to um, unlock this, and I'm going to copy and paste that. So the Siege Pack is something I want to look at. So if I go to the Assets folder, and when it comes up, I will search for that. I'll use that as a keyword, so that way I'm not uh, searching for just, you know, for that. And you got to make sure you're in images. So I got a bracket here, so I don't want that. Okay, here we go. So here we go. Here's the Siege Pack. There's Siege Pack 2 and Decoration. So you, it narrows down the search. So if you know what you're going to search for or what you want to search for, that helps a lot. So these search titles are the actual titles of the content or close to it. So most of these are titled so that you can do a search for just that term. Otherwise, if you just write down, um, if you type out something like river or something, you're going to get, you know, 50,000 rivers. So if you want to only get a asset that's in one of these packs, I've given you the keywords to search for, or you can use the website or whatever you want to use. But when you don't know what you're looking for and you don't even know what's contained in the pack, it's not very helpful. So what I've done is made this so that it is easier to know what you have and what you don't have. The other thing is um, I do this for kind of being lazy because I don't like going to the website, digging into the search engine to try to find, you know, in the um, assets tool and then getting lucky and finding something that I may or may not need. So I'd like to have a little bit more organization. And what I've done is I'm going to create a reference manual with the photos of the items so you have an idea of what's in the pack and I'll have it embedded in the module so that when you download the module, you will be able to have the overall link to the asset packs. You'll have the search titles for each one of the packs and I'll update these monthly. So as time goes on, this list is going to get a lot bigger, but at least you'll have an idea of what's in each pack. And then I will also add new links as they become available. So all these are the included artwork and assets up to date. And then I'm probably going to add a lot more to this module as time goes on as far as reviews and things like that. But I think I'm going to put it on the Fantasy Grounds Forge store for like a dollar or two. And it's really not giving you anything other than some convenience. So you're going to get the keyword searches. You're going to get a list or a table of what's in each pack, just a rough idea. And then you will also get an updating running list of content that gets released on the store. And then I'll turn it into a reference manual so it'll be searchable and you'll have a lot easier time using this. Instead of just using this big story entry, I'm going to actually make it a reference manual so that you guys can navigate easier. So that's my little pitch about the ARP subscription. Um, just remember that 
decals have changed. They used to come with the rule sets. They used to build specific decals for the rule sets. I think they've kind of gone away from that. So if I go to FG decals and then I go to assets and then I will search for FG decals and see what we get here. So there's FG decals. And you got to make sure that you don't have these brackets around it. And the reason it does that is because I copied and pasted it from a from an actual uh, table. So those brackets. So here's the Fantasy Grounds decal art pack. And once you double click on that, it will take it a second and it will load whatever's in that particular pack. So it has to course through it to see what's what's in there and to make sure that it's not corrupted and all that. So Fantasy Grounds will take a couple seconds usually to to look for things. So you got to be patient. So the decal art pack is for the background image. So if you want to change what's in the background, you can do that with the new decal art pack. So that's pretty cool because that was generally if you bought a book or official content, that's what you would get. So there's some full pictures, there's symbols, there's some modern fantasy, sci-fi. So it's not just D&D &D stuff. And there is a lot of content here. So there's a decal for space. There's some cyberpunk stuff. There's all kinds of really cool looking assets in here that you can use for your background image. So right now for our background image, I'm, a, I'm using the Fantasy Grounds Academy. Obviously it's branded for the videos and for our community. But if you wanted to use more decals or different ones, you can make your own or you can get the subscription and get the decals. And not to mention, these all can be purchased separately. So if you only want one map pack out of here, you don't have to subscribe. You can just buy it for 10 bucks or or you can buy the whole thing outright for 50. Just remember that the subscription is monthly and that if you cancel it, you're not going to have access to those assets. So enough yapping, let's take a look at some of these assets. So if I go to assets here, and I'm gonna look at my cheat sheet because I wanna make sure I got the right thing here. Okay, so I want to go back to the siege thing. So I wanna make sure I'm in images up here on the top and I'm going to use the keyword search from the module that I'm working on. So this is a map or Fantasy Ground Siege Map Pack 1. So if I highlight this and hit Control C and then Control V for paste, and then of course I'm going to get rid of these little brackets because that, that messes up the search thing. And then it's going to search in here for this map pack depending on what I put in here. So if I copy and paste this in and let's see, I gotta go, there we go. It was a little bit slow, I have to be patient with it because it was still thinking. And now I'm gonna hit enter. So there's the map pack, siege pack one, decorations and effects. So let's see what we got in here. I'm just gonna double click on the Fantasy Ground Siege map pack. There's actually two of them, so. Um, it has decorations and effects, so you have like shot or holes in the walls, that sort of thing, or you have decorations, which is probably your, yeah, these are your ballistas and your um, catapults and those sort of things. So that's kind of cool. So let's just say that you wanted to add it to a map. You would just grab an asset and you would put it in your map tool. So if you have a map that's existing, or you want to add or make your own maps, you can do so. But you would add these map packs to whatever existing pictures you have. And you can save them as a collection. So rather than just one asset at a time, you can actually save them as a group in a folder. And then you can move the entire asset as a group of images instead of just one image at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that just a little bit. So images. And I'm going to import, actually, I'll just, uh, I'll just use something that's included. So if I go to my library, I'll just pick a, a castle or some kind of map pack that I already own. So this would be a third party thing, something I haven't built. So if you wanted to build something instead of importing, like I was getting ready to, you can actually go to your assets library and I'm going to go back to the, the master index and I'm just going to type tiles and I, that'll bring up something. It, it's going to take a minute because that's a really big, broad search term. 
So if I hit enter, you'll notice that you'll get this little this little uh, wheel sometimes. So here's the tiles. There are some canyons, the brushes for cemetery. There's a city dock. So these are some of the fantasy ground stuff, but also um, some of the other collections that I've had. So I have keeper of the core. Here's some tiles. Okay, so here are some chambers for keeper of the realms tiles. So I'm going to go ahead and lay lay something like that down, or you can go back to the big maps themselves. So let's try, let's see what this, this is a actual map. So if you double click, you get a preview image. That's a pretty good size map right there. And then you would hit this create image record. But before doing that, I would advise that you go to your images and you create a new group. So up here on the drop down is a new group. Let's click on this little green plus button that adds a group or a category. And then you click on the little red uh, circle with a line through it, which is edit groups. And then you will simply add in your own title. So I'll just say my map. So I, re I know that this is the stuff that I messed with. If you leave it uncategorized, it gets real messy. So that's why I'm making a new group. And then I just click on stop editing. And now I will select my category that I created. Now, once I do that and I click on create image record, it's going to pull that in. And here's the library. And this is the actual image itself. And maybe I want to have a connecting tile. So let's go back to the Keeper of the Realms and go back to tiles. And I'll just add a little chamber or something at the end. So I'm not going to add that as a map. That's going to become an asset or an actual tile. So I have the whole map here. So I'm going to expand this so you guys can see what's going on. And I'm going to take this and move it over and I'm going to shrink it a little bit because it's way too big. It's herkin. So I'll take this and kind of stretch it down a little bit, make it smaller so that you guys can see what's going on. And then as far as the map itself or the big bigger tile or the image, see, as you can see, there's the Keeper of the Realms map. It's in my maps. So that helps organize it. So when you have all, you see everything that you have. But if you click on my maps, it filters it to just the stuff you're working with. Now that's just more of an organizational tip. So now that this map is in here, you can scroll in or out to get what you want as far as focus if you get off track like this is off centered you can come and right click and go to layers and view and then zoom to fill or zoom to fit i go to zoom to fill and then back it off a little and there's your map so if you wanted to add something to this like another tile what i would do is first i will lock this map and let's put a grid on it so we're going to base the grid roughly on the size of these these stoneworks here. So I don't know what the actual grid ratio is, so I'll start with like 60. So I'm going to click on grid, and then I'm going to click on the um, visibility on here, and you can see it's a little small. So I think 100 will do it, because this is kind of like in quarters. So I think if I do 100, I'll be a lot closer. So it's 100 by 100 um, pixels, and that does pretty much fill that little square. So when you want to get finite about it, you can move the, you can adjust these, and it, see it's off a little bit. So it might be like 110 or something like that. So let's try that. So now if I do this, see that's a lot closer, but it's still a little big. So I'm going to go to 109. It really helps if you know the actual uh, squares per inch and the pixels and the size, but that looks pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but you know, just having that scale helps a lot. So there we go with that. And you can see this is an upper and a lower level. So we're looking down inside of this library. So that's basically the first thing you want to do is set your grid, lock the map, and then start placing your assets uh, accordingly. So I want to add a chamber to this hallway down here. So I'm going to go to the layers mode, and I'm going to add another map tile as a layer. 
So I will take this dead end thing here and I will add it to the map, but I will do that using the tile. So if I drag and drop the tile into this tile area, that is the asset that I chose to use and I'll plug it in down here. Now this says it's five by five, so it may not be scaled properly, but I'll leave it for now. But you can rotate it, you can recolor it, you can change the size before you place it. That's the key there. It helps when you do it ahead of time or if you know what you're going to do. So I'm going to flip this around so that I can use it as the end cap for this tunnel. And once I've done that, I'm going to click somewhere on the map. And there we go. So there's the asset. And now all I have to do is line it up a little bit more. As you can see, yeah, it's actually pretty close. But once you've placed an item, you don't want to stay in the tile mode. You want to go to the layer selection. That way you can actually click on the file itself in the layers list and you can access it by moving it around single click. Yeah, it's a little off, but it's close enough. I'm not going to stress about it. See, it's clicking half a square. Now, it's part of the reason is the scale and such. So if I turn off snap to grid and I actually just move it manually and, you know, you can nudge it, you can... You know, you can take it to where it's not going to snap to the grid as much. But I'm just going to let it ride, so I don't want to make a whole day out of this. So I'll go ahead and just leave it that way and just put the snap to grid back on and just let it snap. So, But basically, that's like your end cap to this. It can be like it's a step up from the rest of the chambers. Looks like there's some kind of uh, scroll and an altar and some braziers. So that's basically how you would work with tiles. You want to place your main tile or some tiles out and then um, lock it, make sure the grid's on, that sort of thing. And then you're going to add assets as you need them and you grab and drag them into this tile area. You rotate them, you resize them, you can recolor them and then place them. And when you're done, if you need to adjust it or move it or, or rotate it again, you click on the layer selection, make sure that you have the correct asset highlighted, and then manipulate it. Because if you leave it on the stamping tool, it's just going to stamp a bunch more instances of the same tile. And I know you've all done that at one point or another. Uh, the other thing I can see about this is it's a little bit off on scaling. So I'm going to go with five. So here I'm going to, I'm in the selection mode. I have the chamber selected. And I'm going to change this to five by five instead of five and a half. And it will scale if you, you got to make sure it's selected. So now that I have that like that and I bring this forward, it's a little bit better, but not much because it's still off a little on the on the squares. So maybe it's 5.2 or, you know, that sort of thing. So let's go with six by six. That looks closer. But it's still not quite there. You see the walls don't line up. This asset doesn't even go very well with this particular uh, map. So if you don't like this, you can highlight this, this chamber, hit delete, and it's gone. Now this is locked. It won't move. So I will try a different asset. So let's try something that's more themed for this particular building. So I will take this chamber that has a spiral staircase and drag and drop it into the tiles area. And I need it to face upward. Right now it's facing to the left. So I'm going to rotate it now, not when I get it on the, you know, when I stamp the screen. And then once I have it rotated in position, which it isn't quite there yet, I need to go the other way. There we go. And now I will click in the center over here. And as you can see, there's the, the staircase that leads up. And this is another spiral staircase that leads down and then I can click the selection tool or the layer selection make sure I'm on this this particular file or layer and then there we go so that works a little bit better it looks a little cleaner it looks like it goes to this more but it does still look like it's slightly off so if you wanted to you can go like 5.7 let's see what that does 5.7 does that fix anything Eh, sort of, kind of. Yeah, it's a little better. How about 5.8 or 5.9? Let's try that. Yep. So as you play with this, you'll notice that you'll have 
you know, some scaling. Normally these things scale up pretty well, but it depends on the author and who made the tiles. So you have that, and I think six is the ticket, so we'll go with six. There we go. So six was the actual needed number. And as you can see, it's snapping to grid at the, you know, at the half. So if you want to get rid of the snap to grid, you can just do that. And it still kind of snaps, but you have a little bit more flexibility on movement. But that that's not bad. You can actually overlay it like that. It actually looks better because it kind of blends in more. So that's a, a way that you can, you know, that you can add different tiles and make your own maps. And it's actually, these were made to be, Put together separately and these other maps i think were more or less made to to be just one existing map with an exit so it really depends on your needs your usages the sort of things that you you would want in your campaign so that's how you use the tiles and you can put furniture in there that sort of thing and if you guys are wondering what theme this is that i'm using for fantasy grounds this is the wizard's desk theme it comes with the art subscription it does not come with the, the basic base uh, demo program. Um, if you want any of these fancy backgrounds and themes, you get the art subscription. That also comes with it. So this decal in the back, though, I put in myself. So if you wanted to make one of these maps a decal or a background image, I'm going to go back to the main area. I'm going to go back to the maps. And let's just say that you wanted to use, instead of using this Fantasy Grounds College thing, Let's say you wanted to use an image as your background. So if you double click and you click on set background decal, it gives you the ability to put in your own custom map or at least the old custom image. You can't use this as a map, but this would be like a background image. So that's how you do that. So if you go into your assets library and you go into either your campaign folder or the data folder, you will find whatever assets that you put in there if these are third party that is so if i double click on this fantasy grounds college logo and i click set background decal now it goes back to what i had it if you want to turn that off altogether you go into the options menu on the top right of the interface and then you come down to where it says desktop decal image you can turn it back to normal which is a, a, a basically this is a magic circle and then you have other options where that comes with the theme. And then you have the book with the magic circle and you can turn it off. And then you have your custom ones. And the other one was a SmiteWorks logo. So this is the original SmiteWorks uh, background decal. Now, if you own some of the official rule sets, they come with their own theme title, like these decals. Um, they, Fantasy Grounds or SmiteWorks is getting away from that. They're kind of doing their own. For them, it was a lot of work to try to extract out the, you know, the, the art from the content. So I think they prefer to have Josh make them, or you can make your own now. So, you know, it's not such a big deal. In the past, you had to make an extension or some kind of change to something to, to substitute out so you can have your own decal. And that is no longer the case. It's included. So in your art subscriptions, you're not just getting maps and tiles. You're getting themes you're getting decals, you're getting map markers, you're getting all kinds of things to help you dress up your map. So even if you bring in your own map, you can still use the assets on top of it. So you just make another layer and that's what you do. So basically that is how you use some of the assets that are in Fantasy Ground. So I've gone over line of sight and, and those sorts of things. So that that isn't something I'm covering today, but if you wanted to, let's say, add a light let's say one of these glowing uh, green things so what i would do is go to the lighting symbol and i would go to add light and i'm going to make some pulsing candles or something in here so what i'll do is i'm going to pick this layer uh, which is going to be the library itself and i want the lights to be on that layer before i place them because that way, if I want to turn them all off at once, I can. So what I'm going to do is select the library layer, which is the, the main layer. If I had the other ones selected, I could, it would basically be keyed from this one. Or if you click away from any of these, you just click somewhere away in this layers area, 
now it will, it will actually create its own layer. So if you want the lights on their own layer and you don't want them together bundled up as with everything else, you can do it that way. So I'm going to make my own light layer. And if you wanted a color to begin with, you can change. I'm going to change it to like this green color. And then I'm going to change the opacity a little bit. I'm going to turn down the opacity so you can see through it more. And I'm going to change it to candle. And you see it changed the color because I used a preset. So if you do not use a preset, change the color after the fact. And this is on a flicker mode, so I want to actually change it to a pulse. And then I'm going to go ahead and go back to my green color that I wanted and turn down the alpha channel. And now once I have all that selected, I'm just going to click on each one of these portals or whatever these are. And that's going to give me my lights. And you can see that it's on a separate layer. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the play mode. And you have to turn on and enable player vision and line of sight. So here's your pulsing lights that you're going to get. And they're only candles, so they don't go very far. And then if you want to toggle that off, you would just, this is the DM mode. So that's how you would add some kind of ambience to your light. Now, this doesn't have any occluders or line of sight on it. I just wanted to show you that it's pretty simple to add a light to it. So that kind of gives it that you know, that kind of magical, kind of scary kind of feeling. Maybe it's a trap or maybe it's some kind of magical energy that's building up in the library. Maybe it's stealing your thoughts or something. Who knows? But the uh, adjusted uh, lights, you can adjust them. So what you have to do is go to lights uh, or the layer that your lights are on. So in this case, it's on its own layer. And I'm going to go to the lighting section. And this is the add light group area. And I basically want to make sure I'm on here. So you can actually click the selection tool and move these around if you need to. And you can also change the pulse speed. So I'm going to turn that down a little bit. And so this one has a different pulse than the other ones. So that would really throw things off. So let's, let's mess around with those because that can be, I'll leave this one at kind of a higher speed. And then this one, I'm going to put at a very low speed. So now all of them are flashing at different rates. So you can adjust them like that. And then if you want to turn them all off, you can in the layer level, the lighting part. Or you can change that visibility so it's only visible to you or to the players or to nobody. So there's a lot of different things you can do with, with lighting and tiles and such. So that's just an example. There's tons of other things that can be done. So I think that's enough rambling, but that's basically how you manipulate or use the map tools. Um, and then if you have the art subscription, those are the sorts of things that you're, you're going to get. So in that pack, I, I just use a random one. That does not come with Fantasy Ground subscription, the, the actual... Um, maps that I used, but the lighting and some of the other assets do. So I used a pack that was actually purchased on Fantasy Grounds, but not part of the subscription. So like AAW Games has some really cool map packs, and those already have line of sight built into some of those. So that's pretty handy. So anyways, this is what you get in each pack, and that's why I'm making this module so I understand what I have. Because I'm not going to re remember each time what exactly is in each pack so if i know that this pack has brushes maybe i'll bring that up or if i know if it has floors and tiles i'll bring that up so that's what this key is and then these are your your search criteria i just made those out so you can copy and paste them but you have to unlock the the uh, window so i'll leave that unlocked when i make this a module or at least you will be able to unlock it and then all of these links here go straight to the store item so if I want to buy something or if I want to see what it is, I can do that. And then later on, when I get time, I'm going to take the images and embed them in a list so that they tie in with these. So there'll be a link in here and you can click on it. It'll bring up a little graphic, a thumbnail of what's actually in the actual pack itself, give you an idea of what it looks like. So that's what I have for you today. If you guys are interested in this module, let me know. Uh, if I get enough interest, I'll put it on the uh, the uh, forge make it a little easier on you to try to figure out what you have and what you don't have um, you don't need to buy the subscription you can buy one pack at a time 
or you can create your own content and import it. This is just uh, giving you an idea about this art subscription and what's included in it. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. This is Founder Early Rune. I'm signing off for now. You guys have a good week. And I hope to see you around. And I think next Sunday, yeah, next Sunday, I am teaching a map tools class. So if you guys want to drop by Sunday afternoon in our Discord, or you can go to the website and look it up on the events list and sign up for it. If you're not a Fantasy Grounds Academy member, you can go to the website and go to Discord and make sure that those names match. And then join our Discord first if you're not already a member and then join the website with the same name that you're using in our community so we can find you and then sign up for the classes. You can book the classes once you're logged in. Check your junk mail for the registration. So if you've registered and you don't see any confirmation, check your junk mail. That's usually where it goes. And then once you're registered, you can sign up for classes. So take care, everybody. Have a good week. See you around. Bye-bye.